In Mark Wayne's Tom Sawyer, Twain writes an episode in Tom's life that truly reveals a fact about genuine faith. Tom was in the midst of his summer break with big plans, only to be stricken with the measles. He was so ill that interest in anything waned, and for about two weeks he was in bed. Finally, Tom was able to get out of the house and feebly search for some of his friends. To his disappointment, a change had occurred during his illness. A revival swept through the town, and many had, as Crane says, got religion. He walked around hoping to find just one blessed sinful face. He was disappointed. Joe Harper was reading a testament. Ben Rogers was visiting the poor with a basket of tracts. Jim Hollis called his attention to the blessing of measles as being a warning. Tom flew to Huck Finn assured of success, but was greeted with a scriptural quotation. This was the last straw, and with a broken heart, Tom returned home and suffered a measles relapse for about three more weeks. He dreaded the return to his friends and felt loneliness. Healed, he drifted listlessly back only to discover things had changed again. Jim Hollis was acting judge in a juvenile court trying a cat for murder. The victim bird was lying beside. Joe Harper and Huck were in an alley eating a stolen melon. Twain summed it up with, poor lads, they like Tom, had suffered a relapse. This is a great story, which would very effectively illustrate a common issue among Christians, a lack of authentic faith. I use this story when preaching John 6, 60 through 70, about those who Jesus called disciples, in this case meaning just followers, who abandoned him when the truth became too tough for them to handle. Illustrations help a sermon to come alive and to touch an audience. Remember, some of the best preachers you have heard, chances are they used illustrations effectively in their sermons. It is a talent all preachers should master for several reasons. So let's look at it. Why should we use illustrations? Audience conditioning. What I mean by that is that we deal with audiences that are accustomed to short bursts of info from either TV, iPhones, or computers with breaks in between the information. To expect someone to sit for a solid 20 to 35 minutes just listening to a heavy biblical material is a lot. Illustrations allow the breaks. John Killinger says, they help to set a healthy balance between abstraction and imagery. In this, they help to consult both the right side and the left side of the brain. Illustrations also infuse the sermon with emotion, which strengthens the sermon. David Buttrick says, illustrations have enormous power. One 14-sentence illustration has more potential force than 20 sentences of content. An illustration is not more important than the biblical truth, but it may help the listener to better grasp that truth. So what are the goals of an illustration? Number one, they must illuminate or shine the light on the truth. It makes the biblical truth clearer. And if it doesn't do that, then it's not a good illustration. Secondly, it helps paint a picture in the mind of a listener. This is critical to me. When you read a novel, what is happening in your mind? You're picturing the story like it's a movie in your mind. That's one of the reasons why when we read a book and then we go see the movie based on it, we're disappointed. Our powerful creativity has pictured it another way with characters looking differently and so forth. Illustrations help the truth come alive visually in the mind of the hearer. And I think for that reason, they are very important. Thirdly, they offer an example of the biblical truth in action. Regardless of the importance and value of illustrations, I find that students really struggle here. Along with the application, this is a difficult thing for them to really do well. They struggle finding them, and then they struggle using them. So I want us to offer some help in this at this time. First of all, let's think about finding illustrations. I'm convinced that one of the secrets of illustrations is to read, read, read. I believe the best illustrators are those preachers who read broadly. 
They read novels, they read theology, they read popular Christian books, they read magazines, they read newspapers, they are up to date on current events. This is the secret, I think, to good illustrations, to read and then keep a list or a file of those illustrations that you come across. Another way to find illustrations is through personal illustrations. Stories from your personal life can prove to be very effective as illustrative material, humorous or serious, as long as they truly illustrate the point. However, there is a limit here to these kinds of illustrations. Imagine listening to a preacher over a period of months or even years, and all the illustrations that he uses are from his life. Now, personally, I don't have stories from my own life that illustrate all biblical truth. So, and I even limit my students to one per sermon starting out. Never use anyone else's personal story as your own. Another area for finding good illustrations is visual media. You can find it with movies and clips. For clips uh, uh, from movies, you will need to make sure that permissions are granted if you use those. There are many websites that offer video clips as well, but you may need to join the site or pay for the material. For instance, movieministry.com, sermonspice.com, wingclips.com, worshiphousemedia.com. All of these will provide some illustrative material, some visual material that you can use in your sermon. Another area for finding illustrations is real life. When I use that phrase, I'm referring here to stories that have happened to someone else. If you see a story on a news program or you read it in a magazine or a newspaper, then you can use it. If it is a story, though, about someone that you know, you must get permission. And you need to be careful here. Even with permission, some stories should not be shared in a sermon event. Another source for illustrations is your own imagination. You can make up an illustration and then use it in your sermon. Be sure to present this as a made-up story and not the truth. One source for illustrations is object lessons. This has worked for children's sermons for decades. I use myself an antique plumb line that I bought in the Portobello Flea Market in London when I'm preaching from Amos 7, as I'm trying to explain to them that God placed the plumb line among his people. People like to see an illustration. In fact, this form can touch several senses and keep your people interested with you. They can see it, they can visualize it, and some things, some kinds of object lessons you could even smell or hear. Another resource is web research. Research a topic on the web and you may discover lots of good illustrations. Some sites are illustration rich, I would say. For instance, I'm a National Geographic buff. Science and nature illustrations are very effective and they grab the attention of both the young and the old. Finally, I would say that you just need to use your own observation skills to find illustrations. As you're out and about in daily life, keep your eyes and ears open. There are many illustrations all around you. Real life is happening. Pay attention to it. Now, a question comes up. How do you use illustrations in your sermon? Well, first of all, we need to think about transition connection. We've already talked about that. Remember, transition sentences connect ideas in the sermon. Now, make sure you transition into and out of an illustration, or in a sense, you're giving a reason why you are telling this story and how it relates to the biblical truth. This could be as simple as, it is much like. And then as you come out of the illustration, you said, in the same way we. You know, Jesus often did that. When he was using an illustration, he would say something like, the kingdom of heaven is like. When we do that, then we need to connect the point and the audience to that truth in some way. Transitions help us to do that. Also, make sure the illustration is very closely connected to the truth. If a story is told and then not connected, it can put the audience in a tangent direction rather than focusing them on the point. When we're using illustrations also, we should evaluate illustrations. Some illustrations do not belong in biblical sermons. Braga, in his preaching book, refers to, quote, the bizarre, the coarse, the grotesque as having no place in preaching. 
Their use by a preacher may lay him open for the charge of frivolity, vulgarity, and irreverence, Braga says. Now, I want to remind you of something I've already said. Remember that your words build pictures in the audience's mind. Consider what you want them to be visualizing when you are preaching the biblical truth. I heard a story used in a sermon about a man and a woman caught in adultery. It was intended to be funny, but it built into the mind of the listener a naked couple being caught. Truly, there must be a better way to illustrate a truth than to cause the audience to think about what you're trying to teach against. Be sure you remember the power of their imagination. Thirdly, ask always if this is an appropriate illustration for a sermon. This would especially apply to movie clips as well. It doesn't matter if the clip is clean. If it comes from a very unwholesome movie, the audience will think of the other part of the story. So we want to avoid that kind of illustration. Another issue when using illustrations is the length of an illustration. Illustrations are to illustrate biblical truth. They do not constitute the biblical truth. So don't use illustrations that consume too much of the sermon time and take away from your biblical truth. I would say a rule is that it should be brief and tied to the point. In a 20-minute sermon, no illustration should exceed one and a half to two minutes. Now, the number of illustrations also becomes a factor when you're writing and delivering a sermon. Now, there's no hard and fast rule, but generally, I would say one per point and maybe one for the introduction and the conclusion. Now, there's no doubt that you need to use illustrations when starting your preaching career in order to hone your ability to find them and use them effectively. I want to say one last thing uh, about illustrations, and that has to do with storytelling. Many illustrations take the form of stories. And the, the question is, can you tell a story well? If not, then the illustration loses its punch. There are books that will help you improve this skill. Bruce Salmon insi insists stories are a great way of getting people to understand the point that you're trying to make. There are some books that might enhance your storytelling ability. Bruce Salmon's Storytelling and Preaching, Rob Harley's The Power of Story, and John Walsh's The Art of Storytelling. All of these can be very effective in helping you to improve your storytelling ability.